Hello, my name is John Omvik, Director of Product Marketing at Unified Color Technologies. In this presentation, I want to take you through the HDR process and help demystify some of the steps and terminology we use. My first question is, what exactly is HDR? HDR seems to mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Is it just a look or a special effect that you can apply to the image, or is there something greater behind that? Let's take a quick quiz. I'm going to show you three different images. I'd like you to look at these images and try to decide which one is the HDR image. Okay. The first one here is a classic look, very dramatic uh, sky, uh, landscape shot. This one here is interesting. It's a little bit lower key, um, more natural looking. And then you have this image. So which one of these is the HDR image? The actual answer is the third one. Now let me show you this. This is a uh, a preview uh, representation of a 32-bit image on a screen. 32-bit image contains more data that can be displayed on a typical computer screen at one time. So if we go through this and adjust the display brightness, you can actually see that there's a lot more information in this file than you can show on a screen at once. The next question is, who makes the best HDR sensor? Is it Apple? They have it in the new iPhone 4s. Uh, Nikon has some great SLRs with high, uh, high ISO performance. Uh, Canon also uh, great cameras and great sensors. Uh, Sony has a lot of technology in this space. So who makes the best HDR sensor? Well, the actual answer may actually surprise you. You have the best HDR sensor. So let's compare it to some of the different uh, technologies that are out there. The Color uh, slide film had a dynamic range of about 6 EV, uh, useful uh, 6 EV or 6 F stops. Your typical computer displays will show you 8 EV. Uh, a high end digital SLR will be anywhere between 10 and 12 EV typically. But you can have exposures, bright sunny days, that are between 12 and 15 EV. And the human vision system can actually go 20 or more F stops or EV. So we need software to uh, recreate what you saw on the scene. So here we capture several images from the brightest highlights down to the deepest shadows and merge them into one image that compresses the scene and gives you both of these in one shot. A single uh, exposure just will not cover the range. So like I said, if you have a, a typical uh, digital SLR that's 10 to 12 uh, EV, but if you have a much higher dynamic range scene, you're not going to be able to get that all with one shot. So we use multiple shots and identify the sweet spot in each frame. And the sweet spot is there where you have low noise and, and the most differentiation in your uh, gradations. So I'm going to use several exposures. And typically, you'll expose at one f-stop or two f-stop increments. And when I have all of those, we merge these into an HDR scene. So we take the sweet spot out of each one of these exposures and merge them into one 32-bit uh, di high dynamic range image. Now, the HDR process is similar for, uh, for pretty much most applications. You capture the images, you render the raw files, uh, you align them, apply some deghosting algorithm, and merge them into 32 bits. But that's where it starts to change. Most applications will tone map the image immediately into 16 bits. And that means that you're giving up a lot of that information that's in the scene in order to be able to work on the image. The other option is to stay in the 32-bit mode and convert only at the end of the workflow. And unified color applications uniformly all work on the full 32-bit image data that you have after you've done the merge and only convert down to 16 or 8 bits at the very end of the workflow when you're ready to save the file or take it into Photoshop to do additional processing. Let's look at the tone mapping process. Again, if your computer display can only show you eight, eight stops of dynamic range or 8 EV, how are you going to be able to work on an image that is beyond that? Because there are parts of that image that you just can't display on the screen. The compromise is to reduce the global contrast of the image and increase the local contrast, while also bringing in the highlight and the shadow detail that's interesting. So that way we're able to take this very large dynamic range image and map it down into a size that will work on a computer display and also allow you to print the photo or, or share it online or 
do further adjustments in Photoshop. Unified Colors approach is a little bit different than the other HDR software on the market. We perform all of our adjustments, all of our calculations on the full 32-bit data and do not downsample until the very end when you're done processing the file and want to save that out as a, a TIFF or JPEG file. A great way to analogy to, to think of here is uh, the advantages that you have of working on a raw file versus shooting in JPEG. You just have so much more uh, information to work with, more levels of gray, more gradation, and you can make more changes to the image without inducing posterization or other artifacts. Another very important difference is our Beyond RGB color space. In Beyond RGB, we completely separate the brightness information from the color information in the file. And this allows us to eliminate color shifts that are usually associated with, with strong contrast changes in an image. So working in 32 bits means we are able to see additional data that's outside the range here. We have a 32-bit histogram. This light gray box here indicates the display zone. So this is what you're able to see on the screen. Looking at the histogram, though, I can see that I have peaks of data out here. And this is actually from that uh, image that I showed you previously. This is the information that was out in, in the windows and, and in, the, in the sky and the clouds that were outside uh, the room. Now, down below is a typical 16-bit uh, histogram. And you can see that this 16-bit histogram maps to our uh, display zone. And at the end, you clip the highlights. So all of this information that is actually in the file, in the 32-bit file, is lost when you're in 16 bits. So the key is to be able to recognize, to see this information, make your adjustments, bring these highlights back into the useful area, into the display zone, and not uh, end up clipping uh, or losing important information in your file. So there's RGB, and there's beyond RGB. These are a couple of different uh, color patches that I've created. And you can see what the RGB values are for each one of these colors uh, above here. If I'm going to reduce the, the colors, the numbers by 50%, you can see that the, the resulting color swatches are darker, but the color integrity is maintained between them. Here's a typical contrast curve. Uh, from Photoshop. Now you can see that to increase the contrast of the scene it's a typical S-curve. So I darken the shadows and I increase the highlights. And that may all makes sense when you're thinking of just a black and white image. But actually if you have a color image you have different amounts of R, G, and B across the range. And depending on whether the R, G, and B values are split out you can uh, you can darken a red uh, value, for example, while increasing a blue value. And when you do that, you lose the relationship between the R, G, and B values. And that's where the color shifts come from. So let's take a look at those same colors again with this uh, curve applied to them. Now you can see that these are very different colors here than here with the contrast applied to them especially here in, in this, uh, this magenta tone or here in this yellow tone. It's, it's almost turned orange. Now let's take a look at what happens when you do the same type of contrast adjustments in Beyond RGB. Again, we're only manipulating the brightness channel here. So the color uh, channels maintain the relationship between RG and B and thus uh, do not have color shifts. So let's take another look at this. Here's that same color patch. Red is 200, green is 100, blue is 40. When I apply my contrast curve in Beyond RGB, the R, G, and B values all increase in relationship to each other by the same amount. That's why I have this color here and this color here, and there's no color shift between them. When I apply an S curve in a traditional RGB space, you'll notice that my red value increases to 233, while my green value declines to 80, and the blue value goes even lower to 12. So the relationship between these three color values and these three color values is quite different, and that's why this is such a, a different color uh, from the original. Now, Beyond RGB files are saved in the BEF uh, file format. The advantage of using BEF is also noticeable in the amount of compression that we can get for the same image. 
Let's look at this. This is one image that's stored as a BEF file is 10.8 megabytes. This is a 32-bit uh, uh, beyond RGB file. If I look at some of the other standard uh, HDR file formats like OpenEXR and Radiance HDR, they are uh, almost four times as large. This is a, a 38 uh, megabyte image. If I go to a 32-bit TIFF file or Photoshop file, it's the same image as 146.5 megabytes. And just as a comparison, the original Nikon RAW file, just one of them that I used to make this 32-bit file, is 15.8 megabytes. So you see a uh, very good uh, compression ratio, smaller files, and faster processing as a result of using the, the BEF file format. So the, the benefits of Beyond RGB are many. It's based on the human vision system, the ultimate HDR sensor. It's designed for very high uh, dynamic range contrast ranges. There are no out of gamut colors. It's fully device independent because it's based on human vision and not a particular output device or medium. It eliminates the color shifts by separating contrast and brightness data. The image files always stay in 32-bit color until it's converted for final output. And it also produces smaller 32-bit files than Radiance HDR or OpenEXR or 32-bit TIFF files. So I hope this presentation has helped explain the HDR process and highlight some of the, the key features and benefits of our HDR uh, software. Beyond RGB True Color 32-bit processing is a feature of all of Unified Color's products, HDR Expose, HDR Express, and 32 Float. For more specific information on these software products, please visit our website and check out some of our other, other tutorials. Thank you for watching.